Now, my microphone is on, I can actually talk to you. So, hello, welcome to Distractive Creations HQ. We're going to be showing you brand new gameplay today. It's cold winter afternoon, 5 p.m. on January the 8th in Gliwice in Poland. And the reason why we wanted to make this live stream today, by the way, let me guys know if the levels are okay. I cannot hear myself. I don't know whether I'm too loud or inaudible. Um, if you confirm that in chat, I would be much obliged. The reason why we wanted to show you the new gameplay today is we've prepared a part of the Anglo-Saxon single player campaign for the PAX, PAX South, that is going to be held in San Antonio this upcoming weekend. And we're taking uh, that gameplay with us and we want to show it to the people. But we thought that not everybody can be at PAX this weekend. So we wanted to held a live stream. It's a, kind of a guerrilla live stream. We, we, we were not preparing enough for this. So hopefully there won't be a lot of problems, a lot of screw ups during this uh, stream. If so, sorry, we tried our best. Oh, thanks a lot, uh, Shandorf, for letting me know that the levels are okay. And and if you can drop by San Antonio this weekend, that would be even great because you will be able to play the mission that we're going to be showing you today uh, on Xbox One X in 4K. And you'll be able to see it for yourself, how it works. Also, this is not the only content that we're going to be showing at uh, at PAX South. There's also going to be other mission, one that we've already shown, uh, one of the Viking campaign, and also there will be multiplayer beta available for anybody who wants to play the game. So Ancestors Legacy is going to be, uh, is going to be present quite extensively thanks to our friend uh, from 1C company, from our publisher. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be in there stand their booth their public space and we'll be able to show our game to anybody who drops by um regarding the beta a lot of people asked whether the beta is closed or not whether going to be whether we're going to be uh giving more people access to the multiplayer part of the game and yes uh the state of the things as of now as of january 8th 2018 is the beta has closed for some time. I mean, the people who have access to it can still play, but we're not giving away new keys. Um, and for those who don't know, I'm talking about the Steam PC uh, multiplayer beta. This is what we're open right now. Regarding Xbox, no news right now, but we're working on more news for you still. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting into off topic a lot. I mean, just, just slap me if I'm doing that too much. Chat, please. Uh, okay, so the multiplayer beta is going to open again. It's going to open again and it's not going to be closed or semi-closed like you need to request a key or, or try to get uh, a key from one of our partners. We're going to be opening that completely. So you will be able to get access to the multiplayer beta of the game uh, whenever you want, however you want, just on Steam. It's going to be free, like an open product for everybody. And there is going to be... Uh, that is going to be somewhere around, uh, no, it's not somewhere around, uh, somewhere around middle of uh, January, uh, probably January 15th. This is our plan right now. Um, I'm always saying maybe, hopefully, because, you know, this is game development. Things can go different directions. And if there's one or two days uh, shift, either ways, uh, just don't hold my word for it. But, but the plan as of now is to open the beta on January uh, 15th. 2018 and one of the reasons to do that actually there are a couple of reasons uh the main reason is we'll most probably be opening a pre-orders a pc pre-orders for the full game for ancestors legacy full game on january 15th as well uh for those who are interested in it for those who sent us in the questions about when they can pre-order the game. It's most probably going to be January 15th. Just have a look out for it. Our website is going to feature that as well. So you will be able to pre-order Ancestors Legacy on Steam at that time and try out the multiplayer completely for free. We want to be honest with you. We want you to see if the game sucks or not and if you want to buy it or not. That's pretty much the deal. And one more reason is, and this is uh, this is something that is completely like 
a grassroot initiative from one of our community members, Mary Jane, which we also personally prefer to call most valuable ancestor. He's played like, I don't know, a thousand multiplayer matches so far. He's probably the most active member of our community. So shout out, by the way. And he decided to host a first ever solely community organized multiplayer event, multiplayer uh, championship, uh, competition, whatever you call this. And um, uh, he's in charge of that. It's, um, it's available on our Discord. If anybody has a link uh, to our Discord, you might want to paste it in chat right now. If not, if you're going to be watching this on YouTube, I will paste the link to our Discord on YouTube as well. Our Discord was also created by the community. So I just wanted to, to say that we're really happy for people who are doing that for us. Um, I have a notepad with all the uh, things that I don't want to forget before we move on. There was packs, there was open beta, pre-orders. Uh, competition. One of competitions is disorganized by the uh, by the um, by the by our community, and also there is an initiative that came initially from us, but a lot of influencers, YouTubers, streamers, and whatnot have answered us that they would like to play matches uh, either with us or against us and live stream it or record it for the YouTube purposes, which probably is going to happen as well. Like I don't know whether it's going to be five or fifteen people that want to do it still. We wanna we wanna be there, and if anybody feels like it's a good idea to play with or against devs and show it, maybe with a commentary if somebody wants to connect with us and then and you know uh, get a live commentary as well, that is probably also gonna happen because people are also uh, interested in that. We're really happy as well. Um, yeah, let's move on. Um, today, as I said, we're gonna be playing one of the Anglo-Saxon missions. Oh yeah, thanks a lot. Newbie new nobby knobs 83 for pasting the discord link um we're going to be playing uh one of the missions from the anglo-saxon campaign the mission is called calm before the storm and um i don't want to spoil a lot for you uh there's oscar also known on our discord as dc the gamepad god because he he can actually play gamepad real well he's going to be using gamepad today but one of the events that we held he proven his gamepad skill and proven one of the very important things for us because he was able to defeat very high level competing players that were using keyboard and mouse with a gamepad which shows that this game either sucks or is fully playable with uh, uh with a gamepad and keyboard and mouse and it makes sense to play both and both can compete against each other which was very important anyways Let's start with the mission intro. It is also actually an intro to the entire campaign, which shows the events, the real historical events that are the base for this entire uh, campaign. And then we're going to start the first mission from this campaign. Oscar's going to be playing. I'm going to be trying to make not too lousy uh, commentary. Nope, nobby knobs. It's not Lindy's Farm. It's the totally new, different campaign. That's, that's why we decided to show it to you, because it's a new single player content all right let's start with the introduction and then oscar are you ready okay okay and then we're going to launch into the mission itself first uh the end. edward the confessor met his end on a cold night of the 5th of january 1066 bequeathing the country to nowhere the only apparent scion to the throne was edgar a 15 year old son of edward the exile unfortunately Due to Edward the Confessor's inability to secure young Edgar's heritage, a prospect of peaceful hereditary succession receded. As a result, a claim to Britain's throne was demanded by three ambitious champions. A cunning nobleman, Harold Godwinson, that secured his position as the most powerful man in England after succeeding his father as the Earl of Wessex. William the Bastard, who has been allegedly offered a kingship by Harold Godwinson shortly before Edward the Confessor's death. And lastly, the King of Norway himself, Edward the Confessor's brother, Harold Hadrada, who was considered the last great Viking. However, the Wittenagamot, the ruling class of royal councillors, considered Edgar too inexperienced to be an effective leader in the course of inevitable succession war and decided to crown Harold Godwinson as the next King of England. As a result, Tostig, an exiled brother of King Harold Godwinson, persuaded the King of Norway to invade Britain. Shortly before that, 
Harold tried dissuading him from sailing, but when Tostig asked what the new king had in return for the Norwegian monarch, he just snorted. Seven feet of English ground, or as much more as he may be taller than other men. Early in September, Harold Hadrada took over 300 Drakkar ships in the direction of East Britain heading for York. The first demonstration of resistance was met at the outskirts of the town of Fulford, led by brothers Edwin and Morcar. All right, and we're back at ya. Um, Oscar, you ready to start? Okay, Oscar's just hiding some debug comments right now, and we're good to go. Okay, um, so this mission, this opening mission from the, uh, the the British campaign. Oh, I'm not gonna chat over the dialogues. We're close to Fulford. I heard that some of Tostig's filthy mercenaries are hiding here. Be prepared. Talk to the devil. Take no prisoners. All right. As you can see, all the squads that were uh, that were let me just do this. they were present in the actual intro are here. You can see them right there. Oscar is fighting. Uh, there was an ambush, but this is not a very tough ambush. It's more of a tutorial purposes so that you get you get a grasp of all the uh, of all the combat commands and everything and chain and so on. And the beginning of this mission is one of the two brothers, which is which one is it? It's I think it's Edwin, right? This one is Edwin, yeah? Edwin, because there are two brothers in this mission, Edwin and Morker. And Edwin is... And Edwin is uh, getting back to the actual base at Fulford, uh, to his brother Morker, who is waiting for him there. And they just got the news that probably Viking enemies are approaching because this is a co campaign of Vikings fighting with uh, with Anglo-Saxons and they need to get back and and the river, the small river, it's called Germany Back that we're seeing here yeah. it's gonna be extremely crucial in the next part of this mission because it's gonna be like a front line of the actual not battlefront, uh -huh, but front line of the actual uh, fight between armies in here and um, one of the reasons why we wanted to show this mission is um, the missions that we've shown previously from the actual Viking campaign uh, they were quite solely meant to be a tutorial in the beginning of the game and uh, and um, and the thing is <clears throat> that because of that they were quite linear and one of the things that we wanted to uh, to showcase in here is a slightly less linear gameplay in a single player campaign uh, in a single player mission also it's a different Welcome faction my brother. Edwin, you've come late we prepared for battle as much as we could but that's not enough we need more men let's take a while to strengthen the flanks and fortify did the scouts come back Yes, Harald and his warriors are two days away from here. We need to hurry up. Calm down, brother. We have plenty of time. <laughs> right, so this is our base for now. Um, this, is a, this is a new faction that we've not shown yet. You're going to see a different unit. You're going to see different skills. And also you're going to see the tables turn, so to say. So the Vikings are going to be the aggressors in here. Um, that's one thing that we wanted to show. Also, this uh, mission features full day and night cycle. It's actually part of the gameplay here, because to complete this mission, you gotta take care of that. You gotta be aware of passing days. One of the things that I think Edwin uh, said, or will say in just a second, is that probably the enemy soldiers, enemy troops, are gonna be here in about two days time. This is a hint for the player that you got about two uh, days and two nights of time to gather resources and to prepare for the actual attack, actual siege, actual battle that is gonna take place here. And this is what Oscar is gonna be doing right now. So first thing is actually you have these um, 
uh, these uh, objectives in here, of course. So prepare for the battle is the main one, but there are side objectives or optional objectives uh, that tell you what you might want to do. I mean, they're not uh, they're not obligatory. You don't need to do these gray, these three gray objectives in here. Um, if two days and two nights pass and you will not have done this, the battle will start anyways. It's just up to you. So one of the things that we decided was cool to do kind of a non-linear way is you can take this time and use it however you want. And you can uh, either gather resources, uh, recruit new troops, build up your defenses here. Uh, these are only hints for you, these, these objectives in here, because they will be the most useful things that you can do. But for example, there are things that it doesn't mention at all, like for example, building traps. Uh, it's up to you. If you want to use more advanced strats and tactics, you can you can do that as well. It's it's up to you. Wow! I think you're shredding through that unit, Goskar. This is is that Edwin? Yeah, I think Edwin is. Oh, it's Morker. Okay, that's Morker. That's quite efficient. Anyways, um, so one of the things that players usually do in this mission, I mean players, us, because it's not <laughs> been played by a lot of people so far, is send various troops around to collect the resources because you need them for build base, for extending your nation, like Oscar has just started a second tier of technology advancement. Sometimes I feel the camera does not scroll out far enough. Can that be implemented? GG Cairo? Uh, no. There are many reasons for the for for, for, for why we, we, we probably won't be able to implement a full zoom out of the camera. Uh, performance is just one of them, but there's more. There's also uh, gameplay design that, that would would interfere with a lot of elements that if we did that. Anyways, uh, but there is, a, there is, Oscar, can you showcase uh, action camera? This is uh, the most important thing where you can fully control the camera, rotating it around. Some people wonder whether you can rotate the camera in here. You can, of course, zoom in, zoom out, and uh, but probably this is not what you were asking about. I know that. It's just, just, just want to mention there are two types of camera. This one also does not feature uh, HUD and interface. It's just for, you know, the visual purposes. Uh, but I think we have good enough animations to actually make that fun to watch the camera. All right. So one thing is you might want to collect resources while playing this mission at the start and then you have to constantly take care of some troops attacking your base because they're going to be trying to disturb you. Quite interested to see how you handle this due to what happens. I'm not sure Nobby Nobby what, what your Nobby Nobs what, what you're talking about is, is are you talking about the uber skill of Oscar that's undeniable but um, if you're talking about something else please uh, elaborate. Uh, so you're, you're going to be uh, collecting resources while enemy troops you have to search the surrounding grounds. while enemy troops are going to be attacking you from different sides, from different angles. There's also uh, more optional content in here, like I think Edwin mentioned that there might be one more very experienced squad joining us real soon. We'll be waiting for that. It's still a lot of time for that, but, but there's like an optional encounter. Ooh, hoo hoo! I'm guessing we're gonna have to restart the game in that case. Happens, guys, I'm sorry. Um, right, let's do it, Let, let's start again. I'm gonna turn the camera. <laughs> I know, it happens, guys, I'm sorry. Let's see if the gamepad god is real god. I think he was too good for this game, so it had to crash. Anyways, we're gonna start it again. And, um, you know, reality of live streams, that happens, that happens. Also, it's a build that is meant for, we're still polishing that. We're gonna be wrapping up that build tomorrow. So there, there's still some crashes that we might be able to fix before packs. And this is unfinished game as always. So yeah, uh, let me see one thing if we're good on everything. Okay. So Oscar, you might wanna let me know when, uh, when, when, when the game is ready, when the game is up. Um, once again, why we're showing you the Anglo-Saxon gameplay? Uh, we wanted to showcase another another faction. We wanted to show another uh, another mission. We wanted to show another part of the storyline that is also based in a real historical environment. Like the missions that we were showing from the uh, from the uh, Viking campaign were somewhere around eighth century, about seven eighth century, uh, the raid on Lindisfarne, and this one is way later. It's, it's something I really wanted to touch upon because um, 
when 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 people see how our squads look some of them complain that um that we do not uh do not have squads that are um 100 historically accurate because of the fact that some squad looked differently at that time as like the viking era was but they look differently 100 years later and that's because the the span of our game the span of entire single player campaign is like 300 years or so and that means that we are uh we we cannot implement different look of each squad for different century or different you know time period and just wanted to touch upon that because this uh this Oscar, do you remember what year this uh, this mission happens? Uh, it's about thousand. Yes. Yeah. 1066. Oh, is it? It's ten sixty six. So it's way different than seven hundred ninety six, if I remember correctly, or so that Lindisfarne takes place. Just wanted to, you know, guys. Oh, exactly. Thank you, Nobby Knobs. So you're the guy who knows everything. It's ten sixty six. We got, a, we got a real expert in the chat. <laughs> that's cool. Okay, um, okay so and, and, and that's one of, the, one, of, one of the reasons we wanted to um, explain ourselves, to uh, excuse ourselves. So, so why, why squads will not, due to obvious reasons, look always 100% historically accurate. Yeah. We're ready? Yes. Yeah, okay, let's go. All right, so this is the beginning of the mission again. Believe it or not, Oscar was trying to play it slowly previously. He can try to play it a bit faster right now. We're gonna see how fast you can go when you're actually a skillful player. You got archers or slingers in here. One very interesting thing to mention is, depending on the angle of your troops aligned, you can have friendly fire or not, or have it very reduced. So if you have enemy troops in between your archers and the actual melee squad that is attacking, you probably won't get friendly fire at all. But if, if they're aligned, so there is like your allied troops are showing their back to your archers that are trying to hit the enemy troops, you're gonna have a lot of friendly fire. So, you know, maneuvering your squads is something very important here. Um, oh, so Nobby Nobs is studying at Winchester University, medieval history. Gosh, you know, thousand times more than we do about this. I, I hope we're doing okay. We're not butchering your history. <laughs> uh, wow, that fog of war looks amazing. Thank you, Neko. That was awesome remark. We're gonna tell it to our programmer. Or, you know, you can say it to our programmer because you're one of them. Um, right. Uh, so I was, I was, I was mentioning the, uh, the, the. the the archers and slingers these are both ranged units and anglo-saxons are actually specialized in ranged units uh they have longbowmen it's probably the only nation that has longbowmen you have to unlock that uh that unit it's on a second or third third i think it's on a second uh, technology advancement tier you need to unlock it and then you will be able to use uh these uh these troops that have the longest range and they're really cool prepared for battle as much as we could but that's not enough we need more men let's take a while to strengthen the flanks and fortify did the scouts come back yes Harald and his warriors are two days away from here we need to hurry up calm down brother we have plenty of time please don't crash on me this time so once again I don't know if you guys have noticed but um there's quite a lot of collectibles lying around. It was, I'm not sure if I have mentioned that. Oscar is the one who designed and implemented this mission. Of course, with the help of our art team and QA and so on and so on. But um, uh, he has distributed all these collectibles around this map. And of course, he knows where they are. But uh, when I was playing this mission for the first time, I was surprised how, how, how many of these are lying around. And I sent all my troops. And it takes like a minute or two to collect that. It helps a lot. But it, it, it needs... For you to trigger that you know uh explorer kind of mentality to look around the entire map and, and, and find all of these um right now we are uh we are nearing the moment where the actual day and night cycle kicks in and it starts 
kind of counting time before the actual battle begins. So you have two days and two nights to collect resources. If you want to complete all these three optional objectives, you can do that. Now, and it's highly advisable, but it's not impossible to, to make it uh, throughout this mission without it. If you don't want to, it's your, uh, your choice. And also, uh, you might want to think your strategy. Um, this mission isn't exactly easy. Uh, the goal of this mission is to um, to uh, fight the, uh, the the battle that's gonna take on on the on the on the banks of Germany back, and I don't want to spoil it for you. What is gonna happen is gonna happen, and, and you're gonna see that in a moment. But um, it's important to prepare for this battle and to be able to with uh, withstain as long as possible, and for that. You will need a lot of resources so that your troops are not only uh, plentiful, but also uh, you will need like mm, armor upgraded for these so they last longer in battle. You will need resources to be able to. I'm, 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 I mean, I don't know. I'm guessing, but I'm pretty sure Oscar is going to be using traps as well uh, to prepare for the battle. And also, I'm pretty sure he's going to expand his base uh, just in case. Like his second name is just in case. <laughs> he's gonna be expanding the base so that when crap goes down the south his base is more secured and and we will show you the uh, the mechanics of base defending uh, later on let me know Oscar when you're gonna be turning that on so when I'm in the you know fever of talking I, I don't forget that you you tell me when we, we will show guys uh, how you turn off the base uh, defense as you can see these guys are still attacking so you gotta uh, you gotta you gotta kind of multitask. You gotta collect resources, build your base, and at the same time look out for guys, uh, for enemy troops, for Viking troops that are attacking you because they're attacking from many angles. And you're not always gonna have your troops on the particular part of the map that is gonna that is gonna be you know there's gonna be uh, attacked at the moment. There are a couple uh, tutorials in here, as you can see. This one is a recruitment tutorial. Um, they're here mainly for PAX purposes, for the you know presentational build. Oh, there you go. There's one trap that Oscar has already set up. Um, for the uh, uh, for the presentational purposes, uh, normally this mission in the game, uh, in the entire single player campaign, it's going to be I think at least a ninth mission. Um, there's a certain level of non-linearity in how you play the single player missions in the game, so uh, it might not be ninth, but even you know 10th or 11th or even 20th but um it's at least ninth mission so they will not uh this mission will not uh, feature tutorials when 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 the game is finally released this is just you know for guys that will be playing the game for the first time right so we've recruited shieldmen uh as edwin said they're gonna be uh they're gonna be super useful in the battle and I, uh, Oscar is also showing the replenish, uh, replenishment uh, mechanics right now. When your troops are uh, fighting, and some of the soldiers, some of the some of the warriors from a troop uh, die, you can get back to the base and replenish your squad. It costs you resources, of course, but it's uh, it's it's very useful so that you don't lose experience of that unit. And when it's leveled up, when it's with a higher armor and so on, you just replenish it, and you get it. You What's know, happened? you know. Okay, so two days have passed. How close are they? It's a matter of hours now. Good. Good. You sound like you didn't crash. We have to stop delaying the inevitable. Let's secure the bank of Germany back. Our west flank is inaccessible now due to the Aust River overflow. And then, east from here, there's nothing but swamps. Our defense line is Germany back. Then we must give all we have left in us. No doubt, my young brother. All right. Uh, Oscar, tell me, have you managed to do the optional stuff with the uh, extra unit? No. Uh, okay, so even he has missed it somehow. Uh, there's an optional kind of encounter uh, that you can find in He's just unlocking the uh, longbowmen. They're going to be super useful if you align them right, of course. Um, that you can get a squad that you normally don't have in here. They're berserkers, uh, or or who's carls? Uh, berserkers or who's carls? Who's carls? So these are like uh, these are extra uh, long axe squad that you normally can't recruit in that mission. It's the only way to get who's carls, 
in this mission is uh, if you do this optional encounter. So just a spoiler, spoiler. So he's uh, also, there's secure the flank with a hero right now. Um, it's a hint for the player. It's not, once again, this mission is slightly less linear than the previous missions that we've shown. You don't have to do this. If you don't want to secure the flank with your hero, the battle will start anyways. It's just a hint for you. Um, so Oscar is, uh, is, uh, is, is setting up his troops right now. Um, when the time passes or when you, I think the logic is, or when you uh, secure the flanks with your heroes, uh, the actual battle is going to start with a cutscene. And, oh, he's setting up traps. Very nice, very smart. Let's see how he does. So this battle, as a lot of battles in a lot of RDS games, is going to have like waves, stages. So, of course, stages are going to get tougher. It's an equivalent of a boss fight, pretty much, in any other game. Um, and the longer you withstand, uh, the more successful you are, the closer you are to completing a mission. And also, your troops are gaining experience. Every single warrior that your troop kills gives experience to that unit. So, you know, with every higher level, you get... Yeah, I think we're starting the, uh, the, the battle right now. Uh, the very first level up that you have for your squad, you choose a specialization, and each next level up there go, goes towards that specialization. You cannot change your specialization, you know, during the uh, further level ups. If it was Tolstig, beast would be more appropriate than an army. Stay focused. Now the real battle begins. Um, so, the Vikings have arrived, let's see if Oscar has tactically set up his troops properly. I can see that the uh, Bowmen are doing really great, they have already taken down, yeah, pretty much all, 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 almost taken down one Spearman squad. The left flank is secured by three or four squads, the right one by three squads, and there are heroes on both sides, like Morker is on the left side, okay. Each hero has his own skills. Oscar, can you show Morker's skills? Or Morker's skill? There we go. So his skill is... Where do we have it? Oh, it's fear. So it induces fear in the enemy troops, which means they uh, they lose morale. And their combat capabilities, capabilities are dropping. There you go. Uh, one of his uh, troops has just leveled up. He chose defensive. Very wise for the battle that needs you to endure as long as possible and this squad is not at full health can you show Edwin's skills there oh he's, he's leveled up so he's choosing offensive for Edwin and his skill is rage which is mm, buffing your own allied troops and um, yeah I think the first wave is done Oscar has just finished healing his uh, troops very nice if you if you complete the first mission uh, fast enough, you still have time to heal your troops before the next second wave of uh, enemies come, which is good. Are these in shield wall, Oscar? Yeah, very good. So enemies are charging at you, but Oscar has managed to put up a shield wall of the uh, spearmen uh, before the charge started. And these guys, not only the the charge was disabled. But also they, they lost a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, troops and a lot of health while, you know, making an impact on the actual shield wall. Um, okay, so one of the squads is already retreating. Oscar is very wisely choosing to send one squad to the base because it was is not only low, low on the men count, but also low on health. So he's going to send them back to the, to the base and replenish them. Um, but, spoiler, spoiler, the enemies are going to keep coming. There's going to be way more of them, and so on and so on. So this battle is going to... Uh, is going to... Uh, it's not going to go so well. A lot of squads have leveled up, which is good. See? They're already getting surrounded, so probably some guys from the other flank need to help these guys. There we go. Because there's like two squads against what? Six? Yeah, this is not even fight. Yeah, 
Jessica is putting the right angle on the archers so they can hit enemies in their back and not, you know, uh, make a friendly fire. There we go. This is a big surprise because when you remember the opening cutscene of the battle when Edwin was uh, instructing Morker that the left flank is... I'm sorry, that the left flank is inaccessible and so on. The right flank is also... Uh, I think there's like... the, 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 the river has overflown. Um, the troops were not supposed to get in here. And, and you know what's the coolest part of this? This is the actual real story. It actually happened. The Battle of Fulford was that bad surprise. It, 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 it took place. So uh, this mission is kind of, because there's still a certain level of you know freedom and non-linearity for the player, but it is reenacting the, the real actual event of the Battle of Fulford in 1066. Oscar is trying hard. He's, he's, he's really doing his best here, trust me. There we go. And this is uh, Harald. Is it the king of, of uh, the, the... Yeah, it's a Viking king that is just... He's just arrived with these elite troops. Uh, which means we're... We're effed. Pretty much. Because not only we have tough times defending Germany back, but also these guys managed to sneak through flanks that were originally uh, supposed to be inaccessible. And also, the king and his elite troops are, you know, they're super tough. They're, they're higher armor and they're higher level. As you can see, like, fifth level. The king is fifth level and his elite troops are fourth level. There you go. But the traps that Oscar has originally uh, put in here, just in case, work perfectly. So there's, there's king left and there's still a couple of his troops. But I'm pretty sure the troops are going to keep storming on. One more thing that you will notice. Uh, Oscar has built shooting towers in the base. And they are mercilessly shooting at enemies right now, which helps him a lot. But there you go. Big spoiler. Big thing. The enemy troops have also managed to sneak in from behind. And they're, they're attacking from the back of the base. And we're nearing the actual end of the mission right now. Oscar, you tell me when you decide to end the mission. There we go, and they keep coming. There's going to be more and more of them. Uh, spoiler, spoiler, it's not possible to win the battle. I mean, it's history, guys, come on. You know, when I play this mission, usually at this time, I'm like a minute after finishing the, 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 the mission because I, I, I can't even last that long. And Oscar is still leveling up, but I think he's going to lose his uh, uh, slingers. They're really low on health. And the enemies are targeting the shooting towers, which is very wise. The AI is targeting shooting towers because that is going to help them a lot in getting inside the base. So they left their ranged squads outside and they start destroying the shooting towers while the melee squads... The king is very low on health. This is interesting. This is interesting. It looks like an even battle. Maybe it even was in reality. Hey. Nobby Nobs, do you know if this battle in reality was, was even one? I think it was a bloodshed. At least from what I've read in the history. And I think it, it wasn't an exactly even fight, but... Oscar is a very good commander, as you can see. Alright, there we go. Is that it, Oscar? There you go. Morkar is saying that this is it. They can't last much longer because they've lost a lot of squads and the enemies are already inside the base. Yeah, so Oscar has just decided to retreat uh, all the squads he has, which pretty much means... Oh, he's got heroes and two more squads, but you need to retreat your heroes to complete the mission. There we go. And heroes run safely. Uh, safely is the condition for the mission to finish. So, one thing I wanted to stress is that not all missions in uh, Ancestors Legacy are about glory of each nation. Sometimes you're supposed to lose because that's what happened in history and we think it's cool to reenact parts of history. Right, now let's watch the actual outro 
of this mission, which also serves as the intro for the next one. I think it's really cool. It's going to be a teaser because we're not going to play next mission uh, today. We have just this one for you. And it's going to show you the, uh, the actual main hero of the entire campaign. Somehow he is born through this mission, through the failure that we're seeing right now. And he's taking the main role in the remainder of this British campaign. Uh, sorry, Anglo-Saxon campaign. All right, let's see the intro-outro between this mission. Morcar was not ready to face Harold's army ferociously ravaging the Mercian coast. Tostig knew the Terran, foisting the defenders to an unfavorable position. Anglo-Saxon troops couldn't hold the ground for long enough, and soon, the Battle of Fallfoot turned into a bloodshed. On the 20th of September, Edwin and Morcar were forced to cut back, and with their army shattered, left York unprotected. I mark the day of the Fallfoot shambles black. By mere miracle I returned to York, only to be downcast by the cries of widows of my fallen brethren. But there was no time to yell bloody murder, as the Viking army was getting closer to our home each breath. We, who survived, had no other choice but to pluck up courage and stand our ground. With all, we're far from being an army, hardly a bunch of outworn bruisers who lucked out on death. But without us, York will burn. All right, guys. Um, summing up the uh, what you have guys seen today, that was part of the Anglo-Saxon uh, campaign. There, there's going to be two Anglo-Saxons campaign. Uh, the first one and the second one. This was the first mission from the second Anglo-Saxon campaign, and. Um, what we wanted to show you is the mission that features some elements of non-linearity, some elements of freedom of how you want to progress it. Also, I think it's uh, interesting to see history being reenact in video games, not only for the glory, for the epicness, for the splendor of winning the battles, but also for interesting, uh, you know, things that happen. I mean, it it's up to you how you interpret what happens with Morker and Edwin, but to some, they seem like traitors that seem like anti-heroes, it depends. To some, they actually fought bravely as long as they could and they ran. This is, this is, I don't know, it might be controversial for some of the historians. I don't know, Nobby Nobs, have you studied this? What do you think on that? Let us know. Um, and as I said, there's gonna be five missions in this campaign. Uh, Dunstan, which is the name of the main hero that you have just seen in this outro cut scene, is gonna be the main character from this campaign. He's the gorilla, that's why he was putting this, you know, bandana on his face. I, I don't think they called it bandana in these times. So I don't know. But Maybe. The, <laughs> the stuff. And he's gonna become the leader of the gorilla, but enough spoilers. I want you guys to play Oscar's campaign and see it for yourself. Um, so, wrapping up, unless you guys have questions in the chat, shoot i'm gonna answer these right now that's one of the purposes why we're doing this live stream today um if not drop by pax uh south in san antonio this upcoming weekend if you have time if you're in the vicinity uh if not uh you might want to try out the open beta there's going to be launching pretty soon i think on the 15th of uh, january there's also going to be a lot of uh streams competitions uh our community is getting very active for which we thank a lot we're very very thankful to guys like uh, mary jane Gigi marzil i just want to shout out to everybody i mean it's it's very tough to you know omit names but there's a lot of guys on our discord and they're very active they're playing every day uh once the beta opens you're going to be able to join them anytime you want um we're going to soon re be releasing some more promotional material connected with uh, single player with uh, let's say the campaign the lore the story of the game uh, highlighting some of the nations i mean some of the nations each four each one of the four nations that we have in the game um also um oh and by the way we've seen the trailer for thrones of britannia that uh has written recently uh, being uh, shown and we just want to say that we really like the time period and, and factions that you know uh, creative assembly right it's, it's yes. yeah the creative assembly chose for this for their total war spin-off projects 
cheers to you guys very good choice and we're gonna no questions okay and we're gonna end the stream today uh with just one more track that that is gonna be the main menu theme from our game um this is a track that was uh, composed uh, like all other soundtrack uh like all the remainder of the soundtrack from our game by Adam Skorupa and Krzysztof Wierzynkiewicz, guys who are uh, who are constantly working with us. And it actually has a real lyrics uh, sang in, I think it's like a, a Norse language. Um, you're gonna have to excuse me. I will prepare better for the next time I speak about this track, but we're also thinking about preparing like an actual lyrics video for this one, because it, it, we think it's gonna be cool uh, to showcase this music with the actual meaning of these words. They're sang in, 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 in the real language that the Vikings were using, but um, they have real meanings, meanings. And we're thinking about the lyrics video where you'll be able to see how these words look in, in their original language and also what they actually mean in English, for example. So that's to come. Um, I'm thinking whether I forgot anything. No. All right. So let's wrap up and if anybody has not known it yet, uh, Ancestors Legacy is going to be launching the second quarter this year, uh, 2018, on PC and Xbox One. Mm, of course, Xbox One is playable already. We're going to be showing that on PAX. Maybe we will live stream Xbox gameplay at, uh, at some time soon. I don't know that yet. We're As you can see, we're planning this these streams like Gorilla Way, whenever opportunity comes, whenever we have some content ready, we're just, you know, Letting you guys know. And um, that's pretty much it. We just should wave. Philippe and Oscar, we should wave to the guys. <laughs> Cheers. And hopefully we're going to see you soon. And that was pretty much it for this live stream. Catch you later, guys.